Here's a black hole. We imagine it as an enormous super dark region in space that pulls everything toward it. And once something falls inside, it is dragged to the central endpoint called the singularity, where everything gets squished, right? But what if we told you that's not exactly how black holes work? So what's a singularity anyway? And what really is on the other side of the pitch black curtain? What comes to your mind when you think of a black hole? Maybe you imagine a pitch black monster out in space, a vacuum cleaner gobbling up everything that dares come near it. That's a pretty common image, and yeah, black holes are terrifying, but they're also way more fascinating than you might think. They're not just cosmic garbage disposals. Um, in fact, they're some of the strangest and most complex objects in the universe. So today, let's peel back the curtain and explore the truth about black holes, starting with what they really are. First off, what even is a black hole? Well, it's a region in space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Imagine tossing a ball in the air. On Earth, it'll come back down because gravity pulls it back. But if you could throw that ball fast enough, say at 11 kilometers per second, it would break free from Earth's gravity and head off into space. This speed is called the escape velocity. Now, for a black hole, the escape velocity is faster than the speed of light, which means nothing escapes. Not light, not matter, nada. But how do black holes form in the first place? It all starts with a star. Not just any star, though. We're talking about massive ones, at least 10 to 20 times more massive than our sun. These stars live dramatic, high-energy lives, burning through their nuclear fuel at an incredible rate. But eventually, that fuel runs out. Without it, the balance between outward pressure caused by nuclear reactions and inward pull from gravity collapses, and the star's core implodes. This explosion, called a supernova, leaves behind a dense core. If that core is massive enough, gravity takes over completely, and boom, you've got a black hole. But hold up, what happens inside a black hole? That's where things get seriously weird. At the center of a black hole lies what's known as the singularity. It's a point where density becomes infinite, and our current understanding of physics completely breaks down. Imagine taking the entire Earth and crushing it down into a ball the size of a marble. Now imagine squeezing that marble even more until it has zero size. Sounds crazy, right? That's essentially what the singularity is supposed to be. Infinite mass packed into zero space. But here's the kicker. Physicists aren't even sure singularities are real. Sure, the math suggests they should exist, but infinities don't really show up in nature. When they do pop up in calculations, it's often a sign that our theories are incomplete. Let's pause for a second and think about this. If singularities aren't real, what's actually happening inside a black hole? Is it just a glitch in our understanding? Or is there something else? Something beyond what we can even imagine lurking at the heart of these cosmic giants? Before we dive deeper into that rabbit hole, let's talk about something a bit more tangible, the event horizon. This is the boundary of a black hole, the point of no return. Once you cross it, there's no going back. It's like stepping onto a conveyor belt that leads straight to the singularity. No matter how fast or hard you try to run, you're going in one direction, down. But event horizons aren't just boring boundaries. They're actually where some of the most mind-blowing phenomena occur. Take Hawking radiation, for example. Stephen Hawking theorized that black holes aren't completely inescapable. Near the event horizon, particles and antiparticles are constantly popping in and out of existence. If one of these particles falls into the black hole while the other escapes, the escaping particle carries away a tiny bit of the black hole's energy. Over time, we're talking a long time, like 10 for 68 years, this process could cause the black hole to evaporate entirely. Yeah. You heard that right. Even black holes have an expiration date. But wait, if black holes can evaporate, what happens to the stuff inside them? Does it just vanish? This is one of the biggest mysteries in modern physics. According to the laws of quantum mechanics, information, like the properties of particles, can't be destroyed. But if a black hole evaporates completely, where does that information go? This conundrum is known as the black hole information paradox and solving it could unlock entirely new physics. Now let's take things up a notch. Not all black holes are the same. Some are massive, with billions of times the mass of the sun. These are called supermassive black holes, and they sit at the centers of galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Scientists think they act like cosmic anchors, shaping the structure of galaxies around them. On the other hand, there are also tiny black holes, sometimes called primordial black holes. These might have formed in the early universe, right after the Big Bang, when conditions were unimaginably dense. 
Some scientists even speculate that these tiny black holes could explain dark matter, the mysterious substance that makes up most of the universe's mass but doesn't interact with light. But there's one type of black hole that really steals the show, spinning black holes. Known as Kerr black holes, these cosmic whirlpools don't just sit still, they spin at incredible speeds, dragging space-time along with them. Think of it like a spoon stirring honey. The honey, space-time, gets twisted and pulled along by the spoon, the black hole. Uh, this spinning motion creates all kinds of wild effects, like ergospheres, uh, regions where space-time moves so fast that objects can't stay still, even if they're not touching the black hole itself. Let's start with a question that's been puzzling scientists for decades. What's on the other side of a black hole? The short answer is, we don't know. But that hasn't stopped people from coming up with some fascinating theories. One idea is that black holes could be connected to wormholes, theoretical tunnels through space-time that link one part of the universe to another. Imagine you're holding a piece of paper. If you fold it in half and punch a hole through it, the hole connects two separate points. A wormhole is kind of like that, except instead of paper, it's space-time itself. Some scientists even think that black holes might not destroy everything that falls into them. Instead, they could could act as gateways, spitting matter and energy out somewhere else in the universe, or maybe even in a different universe altogether. Sound crazy? Um, it gets even weirder. Some theories suggest that the universe itself could have been born from a black hole. Picture this, the Big Bang starts with an infinitely dense point, much like the singularity at the center of a black hole. What if our universe is just the inside of a black hole that formed in another, larger universe? But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Remember how we talked about spinning black holes in part one? Um, these Kerr black holes don't have the same kind of singularity as non-spinning ones. Instead of a single point, they have a ring singularity. This ring creates a unique space-time environment where things get complicated. Here's a fun visualization. Imagine you're tossing a rock into a pond. Normally it would sink straight down, but what if the pond were spinning like a whirlpool? The rock wouldn't just sink, it would spiral downward, following the swirling motion of the water. That's kind of what happens with matter falling into a Kerr black hole. Instead of plunging straight into the singularity, it gets caught up in the rotation, creating a dynamic, chaotic path. Now, here's the real twist. Some scientists think that you could actually survive crossing the event horizon of a spinning black hole. Instead of being crushed into oblivion, you might find yourself in a strange, uh, almost normal space-time environment. Of course, normal is a relative term here. You'd still be cut off from the rest of the universe, and the forces at play would be unimaginably intense. But it's a tantalizing thought. Could black holes contain entire worlds inside them? Speaking of tantalizing thoughts, let's talk about the energy potential of black holes. Remember those ergospheres we mentioned earlier? In theory, they could be used to extract energy from a spinning black hole. By carefully dropping matter into the ergosphere and capturing the energy released, you could theoretically harness an almost limitless power source. It sounds like science fiction, but hey, so did black holes themselves a century ago. And then there's the ultimate question. What do black holes mean for the nature of reality itself? If singularities don't exist, what does that say about our understanding of space time, and gravity. Some scientists believe that the answers lie in a theory of quantum gravity, a yet-to-be-discovered framework that combines Einstein's general relativity with quantum mechanics. This theory could not only explain black holes, but also unlock the secrets of the universe's most fundamental building blocks. So, where do we go from here? Black holes are still one of the biggest mysteries in science, and every new discovery raises more questions than answers. But one thing's for sure, they're not just cosmic vacuum cleaners, they're windows into to the most extreme, mind-bending phenomena the universe has to offer. And who knows, maybe someday we'll figure out how to harness their energy, travel through their wormholes, or even unravel the mysteries of their singularities. Until then, black holes will continue to captivate our imaginations and challenge our understanding of the cosmos. Thanks for joining us on this journey. If your mind isn't completely melted yet, hit that like button, share this with your friends, and stick around for more deep dives into the universe's greatest mysteries. See you next time.